Uh, hello, um, other owners of the XFL. This is uh, Stephen Harless, um, owner of the San Diego Chargers. Um, this is going to be the first podcast of the PlayStation 4 era. Um, used to do these every week, but I've also had a little help in the other uh, PS3 league on doing them. Uh, haven't really had time to catch up. And uh, it takes a lot to do these things as far as notes and stuff like that. I really just don't didn't have the time to sit down, but now you know I've had surgery and stuff like that, and I'm out of work another week, so I figured I'd do one. Um, try to catch up this season. I'm gonna be um, I'm gonna be reviewing all the users' games uh, so far that we've had this season, and then uh, I'm gonna give you a preview of tonight's game. Uh, for Philly versus uh, San Francisco 49ers. Also going to give you uh, my own opinion of the power rankings, usual-wise in the XFL. And then I'm going to give you a little state of the league kind of thing of what's going on within the XFL, new members, uh, uh, have, you know where we want to go in the near future with this and stuff like that. But uh, started off uh, week two. We uh, first used the game of the year, uh, had San Diego going into Denver. Uh, San Diego won 24-21. It's a pretty even game. Uh, Denver actually outgained San Diego by probably over 100 yards, but Denver had two costly turnovers, actually resulting in 14 points. Uh, one was a fumble, the first play of the game, that gave me the ball inside the 20. I was able to punch that in. Go up seven nothing right off the bat, <clears throat> and then he threw a pick six late in the game. It pretty much sealed it. But it was a good game with me and David Melton, like always. Uh, just two costly turnovers costing the game. Uh, next, we're going to go into the uh, Panthers versus Falcons game. Both uh, rookie users in the uh, PlayStation Four XFL. You got Spencer Reed and you got uh, Timmy Sutphin. Uh Panthers actually pulled that out. Spencer Reed beat Timmy uh, 30 to 17. Uh, basically, pretty much even game. Panthers had uh, stops when they needed them, bigger stops than what Timmy had. Uh, Timmy only had 51 rushing yards, and that's 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 plagued him all year. He's got to get that rushing game going. And Spencer uh, has forced a big turnover there near in the, in the fourth quarter pretty much to seal the deal. I think they both have a handful of turnovers. I think Timmy had three and uh, Carolina had two. That was basically the story of the game. Timmy's got to get that rushing uh, game going. He only had 51 yards. He can he can, uh, he can can wing the hell out of the ball. He can, th- he can throw the hell out of the ball, but his rushing game's killing him. People's keying in on his pass, picking him off because uh, they know he's not going to run for very many yards or even try it that most but he's a rookie he's doing all right i think he's two and four right now and um looking to get better he's also played a tough schedule because he goes in the following week plays the defending champion chicago bears loses 31 to 14 timmy was actually up in that game early i think it was uh seven to three they actually had an even number number of total yards but once again, turnovers and a lack of rushing game plagued the Falcons, and he couldn't get Chicago off the field. As Chicago had uh, four uh, four third down conversions to Timmy's one, he could not get a uh, shadow box off the field on third downs, and that was that game that come to be huge with the turnovers and the lack of rushing game. Uh, next week, uh, Chicago went into KC. In Porta, 13-3 <clears throat> victory over um, Trey, uh, Mike Myers' uh, son. Uh, defensive battle, it was 13-3, like I said. Uh, not very many turnovers. Casey had one, and that was probably the story of the game. Uh, he held Chicago to very minimum rushing yards. He just uh, couldn't get the ball in the end zone, but I don't doubt him because Chicago has one of the toughest user defenses in the league is very aggressive on defense. Um, it's I, I had trouble figuring him out. I know KC had trouble figuring him out, but he hung in there 13-3. That's not a bad score. That's pretty damn good defensive battle. Uh, that following same week, uh, uh, Timmy once again playing a rough schedule. 
Uh, goes into San, uh, San Francisco, loses 34-31. He, he almost had that game. Uh, both teams had a shit ton of turnovers. Uh, Falcons, I think, just had one more in the 49ers, and that was probably the story of the game. I didn't get to see that one streamed. I think I was doing something that was going on, but that's looked to be what was going on. I think Timmy had four turnovers to San Francisco's three. And once again, Timmy's lack of rushing yards. It's its killing him. He's got to get that running game going. I, I can't say it, you know, any more than that. It, you know, probably San Francisco's keying on that pass, and uh, he's getting a couple turnovers off of it. Uh, the following week, uh, KC goes into Denver, wins 24-13. to 13. I think that that's that young man's first usual win, so congrats on that. He forced Denver to have four turnovers, and he didn't have any. That's a big user win for him, a uh, divisional win as well. Uh, Trey's defense looks to be legit this year. He's um, he's lost a user game, but he also – shut the defending champion down but he just couldn't you know it was 13 to 3 but he just couldn't get the ball in the end zone so kc's defense is legit this year so congrats to that young man uh on getting a lot better than he was with carolina last year he looks to be a force in the afc i think he can pull a couple upsets out of the out of nowhere so uh keep a look out for what kc does the rest of this year um the, the same week, uh, Carolina played Detroit. Uh, Carolina put a good beat down on Detroit. Uh, once again, Spencer Reed plays mistake-free football like he always does. You, you're going to have to beat legitly beat him to beat Spencer. He's not going to give you the ball. He's not going to turn the ball over. Uh, and Mike uh, just had costly turnovers, and that's how Spencer wins. You know, if, if, Sp- if Spencer ain't turning the ball over and you are, you know, that's not a good situation to be in. Uh, I think Mike turned the ball over two or three times. and uh, I think Spencer did have a couple turnovers, but Mike just didn't make him pay for him, and Spencer was able to get the 45-24 victory. Uh, next week, um, it was San Diego 14, Chicago 10. That was the Super Bowl matchup. I was able to redeem myself from the beatdown I took in the Super Bowl. Um, I held Chicago to 26 rushing yards. He loves to rush, and I was, you know, I was pretty proud about that because he ran all over me in the Super Bowl, and that's what he does. He he loves to run. He's very uncomfortable passing. I was able to force him into four turnovers, four picks, but you know that game very well could have been a blowout. I was in there with a backup quarterback and just struggled with him. Um, could not convert off those turnovers I was getting, so I only beat him 14 to 10. Um, I think it could have been bad if if I had my starting quarterback with you know running my regular offense. But who knows? You know, maybe we'll meet again. Hopefully in the Super Bowl, we'll see. Um, this week, Denver uh, went to Detroit and romped them 38-24. Uh, Mike couldn't stop the off tackle run missed a couple tackles too that resulted in big plays and he had a chance i think it was in the first or second quarter to really put a statement i think it was tied 7-7 and mike forced a turnover and he put he put a he could have put his foot on his throat if he punched down in the end zone but mike turned around and threw an interception gave it right back to him and Mike just couldn't stop the off tackles run. It got a little bit out of control, but uh, Mike's getting better, uh, learning every day. But we'll have to see, you know, what the season holds. He's, I think he's got, you know, he's already doubled the wins from last year. He's just got to get that first usual win, get that monkey off his back, and I think he'll be just fine. Um, tonight we have a treat for y'all. It's uh San Francisco versus Philly. That's going to be a hell of a matchup. It's going to be the number two offense versus. The number two offense of Philly versus the number seven defense of San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco is a very run-happy team, as Frank Gore's got 735 yards already this season. And Gore is the second-leading receiver for the San Francisco offense. So if that tells you anything, he also loves to throw that screen pass to Gore. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles will be starting Mike Scott, Matt Scott tonight. He's got six touchdowns and eight picks. Not, not too very efficient. But 
uh, Shady McCoy makes up with it with uh, 541 yards rushing and a whopping 6.3 times, 6.3 yard average every time he touches the ball. That's pretty impressive. So it's basically going to be two. I don't see neither team doing much in the air tonight. It's going to be a damn. It's going to be a, a four yards in a cloud of dust kind of game. We'll see um, if anybody can get their passing game going. Uh, neither neither team is really impressive throwing the ball. So it's going to be whoever I think gets their running game going first. And that's it for the previews and the um, catching up the user games. Now I want to go into my rankings. Uh, now this is very opinionated. This is my opinion. It's not really got a formula. I've looked at, you know, who's won user games, uh, strength of schedule, not as far as strength of schedule playing com hard computer teams. Uh, strength of schedules, you know, who's played the most users and you know, who's got big user wins. Because let's be honest, it's it's a different ball game when you play a user. It's not like the computer. It's, you know, it's a, like I said, it's a different cup of tea, and it's it's hard as hell. And I haven't had an easy user game yet. So if that tells you anything, none of these user games are going to be easy. Wins, uh, they're hard, all of them. So, you know, you, you get a boost when you beat another user, and that's basically my formula. But uh, number one right now, I have the uh, Lucas Nestor and the Pittsburgh Steelers. His running game is unreal. Uh, he got a big win over the Tennessee Titans, who's no longer in the league, but was a pretty good player when he was here. Then I got uh, the Chargers, number two, is me. Uh, big win over Chicago, big win over Denver, two and over users this year. Um, you know, runner up last year, uh, five and oh. Uh, number three, I got the 49ers sitting undefeated. Uh, no user wins this year yet. No, he's got one user win against the Falcons. Um, and looking to looking for a second tonight that could probably boost that rating if he go if he starts out two and zero against users. I got uh, the Seahawks at number four, undefeated <clears throat> against all computer teams, but he's been winning by a lot. Uh, he's gonna get his test against the 49ers soon. I think they play twice this year. Uh, number five, I got Chicago returning champs. He took a lump to the computer, and he and I and I was able to knock him off user wise, so his ratings dropped a little bit. I know he's returning champs, but he's got two losses this this year, so he's dropped down to number five. I got I got number six. It's Kansas City uh, as Trey, um, legit defense. Um, I think he took a lump to a computer this year, and he got beat by. Chicago, which is not a bad loss, but he also has another user win, so he's right there in the middle. I think he's on the rise. I think he's going to upset some people this year. Number seven is Philly uh, with, with Chris. He uh, took a lump to the computer run Patriots this year. Haven't played a user yet. Like I said, tonight, big game for San Francisco and Philly, and and one of them's going to rise, one of them's going to fall. Number eight is Denver. Uh, He's took a lump to KC, took a lump to uh, San Diego, but he was able to knock off. Uh, who did he knock off? Um, Michael Wyrick and uh, Detroit Lions last night, and he took a simulated loss to KC because of a connection issue. So, sitting with three losses, he uh, he's on a lower tier, but I see him also rising. Spencer Reed, <clears throat> rookie to PS4. Uh, two user game, two user wins. He's rising. I got to stick him at nine right now. Uh, he's got to earn his keep in this league. He, you know, he's current. He's a former champion in the PS3 league, but you know, he's start on bottom. Got to earn your way up top. Um, so he's he's jumped three spots since he's been in the league. Uh, at number ten, I got Michael Wyrick. Uh best improved player right now. Uh, still improving, trying to get that uh, middle pass game on on point instead of going deep all the time i think he'll do it uh he's been working hard at fixing you know some flaws and i think he'll he'll be right on the outside of the playoffs or in the playoffs wild card this year we'll see what happens i got timmy and the falcons 
at 11. If he can get that rushing game going, uh, I think he's going to be a great user. He's just got to learn to run the ball because he's throwing for 300 yards a game almost, and that's way more than any other user right now out of the 12 we got. And number 12, uh, the re, uh, we just got the Cowboys on in here. I don't know anything about it. Don't, I haven't watched his game, so <clears throat> I'm going to stick him down at 12 for now. And uh, that's the power rankings. Um, you can post comments on what you think or whatever. I know some ain't going to disagree, but it's just my strict opinion, and it really don't matter. But anyway, uh, stay the league. Uh, I like what's going on right now. we got 12 users. Uh, what I really like is, you know, the PS4 is pretty new, so you know, not, not a lot of people going to have Madden 25. Not a lot of people going to go out and buy Madden 25 because it's March and, and it's not football season. So 12 users right now is great. I do want to expand at some point. It might not be with this game, but <coughs> we're at where I want us to be. It's every week. There, <coughs> there's almost a user game. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there's almost a user game every week. So, uh, that's always interesting to, so, you know, you're always going to have something to watch. There's going to be two users going at it week in and week out. So 12 is a good number right now. Uh, my main thing is I want to be straight up and honest with everybody, uh, of what's going on. We had to kick a user out of the league this week. Uh, I hated to do it. But it was two weeks in a row that we've had a problem with this guy. Um, first problem was uh, somebody saw him losing, I think, 14-3 to three or whatever. And then all of a sudden it just turned off. And, you know, I questioned him about it. He was honest that he threw a pick and he got mad and threw his controller and it said it somehow it turned off his game, which, you know, it might have happened. I don't think so. I think he, I think he legitimately turned the game off. But I wasn't there, I don't know, but still, you know, everybody loses. You gotta learn I mean, everyone gets mad when they lose, but you gotta take your loss. That's that's a big rule. It's it won't be a fair league if people turn it off when they lose. And so I suspended him that game. I, sim I simulated his game without him playing it and he lost. Goes into the following week, plays Pittsburgh, uh and Lucas Nestor. Um sends Lucas some text messages that's cussing him because Lucas went for it on fourth down three times and he knows the rule Lucas was on his side of 50 you know I'm not you know whether my firm belief is about simulation football whether Lucas should have tried the field goal or, or whatever but Lucas is on his 38 to 39 yard line that's four down territory and if he don't know what four down territory means then he's about crazy. And all three of those was in four-down territory. None of it was on Lucas' side of the field. It was all on his side of the 50. And Lucas just got all three of them, and he got mad and uh, was cussing Lucas out through a message. And that's one thing I will not tolerate is somebody cussing another user after a loss. You can talk all the smack you want on Facebook, but keep it clean. You know, don't attack a man's family. Don't attack, you know, don't attack him personally. You know, keep it within the XFL and keep it within the teams, and um, we'll be just fine. But I want to be straight up and honest to everybody why that guy's gone, and that's why he's gone. But um, hopefully I'll be back next week with another podcast. We'll see if I have time. But I uh, hope you all enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully I'll be back next week and uh, do another one. Thank you all.